science is in a, an interesting period right now. It's, it's actually got to a stage where it's moving at a, a, a truly incredible rate. I mean, never before do I remember day-to-day -day discoveries. Week-to-week -week was something, month-to-month -month was pretty average, but day-to-day -day now, science is changing. Scientists say there's nothing that, that we're working on that seems to follow the rules and the laws that we were dealing with yesterday. New things are coming. So even the most notable researchers and scientists and writers in the mainstream front, front liner are now sounding more like science fiction writers used to. And their work and their discoveries is in fact seeming a little preposterous to that breed of people whose, whose vision is constrained perhaps by what they perceive to be the limits of plausible achievement. The people who feel that it was all learned, done and dusted with passing that last exam. We, we've just um, been celebrating, or celebrating, and maybe that's the right or the wrong word, but we, we just passed the 50th anniversary of the uh, DNA discoveries by Crick and Watson. Ever since that time, ever since the 1950s, and in fact since the days of Albert Einstein himself, physicists have been searching for something which they define as the holy grail of physics. The holy grail being the, the ultimate quest, the ultimate relic of, of something that they're looking for. And they, they've never known quite what it was, but they know that it's there. This is a, a famous picture by Salvador Dali uh, that was produced at the time to actually commemorate the DNA discoveries at that time. And it, it was a, an unusual picture. It got a lot of very strange press at the time because not only was Dali a, a surrealist himself, but he actually now had subject matter that was surrealistic. Who could portray this? How, how, how did one show DNA? What did it look like? So, so this is the, the, um, the picture. What scientists have been looking for, in essence, is a sort of universal, unified theory of everything. They've reached the stage in, in the last um, few years where they, they seem to know now that the biggest, biggest questions of all will be answered by the smallest, smallest substances and they're looking at atoms, and then they're nu looking at nuclei, and then they're looking at quarks and protons, and uh, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and every time they get more and more excited because they make more and more big discoveries. Scientists of various sorts have established now, they, they've, they've informed us that matter, any matter, can be in two places at the same time. They now know that particles that are millions of light years apart somewhere up, up in space, can be connected. They can cause a situation where they talk to each other through light years of space with no seeming physical connection at all. Space-time can now be manipulated, bent, crumpled. Um, teleportation, they say, is becoming a reality. Gravity-resistant material is now headed, heralded for air transport, certainly uh, for, for spacecraft. And everything now that they're talking about seems to be in the realms of hyperdimensional environments. Parallel universes, they call them. Dimensions beyond the space-time that we live in and are familiar with and understand. So we're going to be looking at all of this in a fairly strategic way. And we're going to be looking in particular at doing it by virtue of a particular substance which is called an orbitally rearranged monatomic element. Now it looks as simple as that. It looks just like a, a little white powder that, that on the face of it could be anything. That particular powder not so long ago was a sliver cut from a 24 carat Canadian maple leaf gold coin. So that gold powder is nothing but the atoms of gold. It's called asymmetrically deformed high spin. It's a high spin element because the way that the nucleus um, is shaped and the way that the electrons spin around it changes. And it, it's gold in a very shocked and frightened state that, that simply says, I, I don't know what I am anymore, I'll just fall apart. It would be the same whether it was atoms of platinum or any of those metals that are, that are classified as noble, transition group metals, the science call them. The interesting thing about it 
is that within the space of time that it takes to transform a piece of gold into that, we move through analysis in a situation where here it tests as gold, here it doesn't matter what analysis you use, you can use spectroscopy, neutron activation, chemical analysis, whatever you like, it won't tell you it's gold. It is not gold anymore. It's a very strange and unique form of silica now. And this has um, caused a lot of interest in the scientific world. They've actually established now that, that those things which are the prize valuable metals are actually constructed of atoms that aren't metal. The only thing that is metallic are the bonds, the little gluons that hold the atoms together and form the solid. And once they've gone, the metal goes, the colour changes, the colour just disappears. This material has become enormously important. It's become important in, in terms of the medical industry, it's become important in terms of the power generative industry, it's become important in, in, in terms of fuel, um, and, and therefore it moves from the operating table of, of the local hospital into the spacecraft um, somewhere up there. This is a material of, of great magic. In today's world, uh, the Institute for Advanced Studies in Austin in Texas has described these materials as exotic matter. It can think of no better way to explain them. They're exotic. They conform to no rules uh, and that they're not like anything else they've ever known. They are not on the periodic table of elements. Science has never known about them until the last few years. Nano is a word that you'll be seeing a lot of. It is a form of measurement, it's a new measurement, and it simply means one millionth of a millimeter. Minuscule proportion, and this is where they're making the biggest discoveries about the universe. When Lost Secrets of the Sacred Ark was um, first published, and that was ten months ago, there were scientists claiming then that there was no such thing as monatomic gold. Well, that was their view then. These are some of the things that we get in today's scientific press. There is masses of this information. All about monatomic gold, about nanowires made from monatomic elements, and about their uses in, in, in various forms of technology. How important they are, how they can communicate with each other, how they resonate with DNA how they will contain and attract energy. It can't reconfigure itself as metal. What it actually is, is little strings of atoms, like the top picture there. They're called clusters or micro-clusters. Scientists are calling these wires now. They're really like DNA strands. They group together in little clusters, like the bottom part of the picture, and form these little clusters. So what we're seeing in the powder that we were just looking at, every grain of that powder is one of these clusters at the bottom. Little groupings of, of single atoms just hooked together, but not by anything metallic. The reason that these scientists hadn't heard about it a few months ago was that they weren't the scientists that were working on it. Scientists now are incredibly busy, busier than they've ever been before. They are so wrapped up in what they're doing and their new daily discoveries that the physicist in this room here wouldn't have a clue what the chemist is doing in his room down the corridor. Neither of them would know what the botanist is doing in the office across the road. So when these things come to them from other areas, um, they're surprised. It's new to them. The silly thing is that it doesn't take a lot to understand that whatever you're researching now in any of these fields, you have to keep abreast of what's going on in the other. And I make the point very often that even a, a little leaping insect, which is biology, knows that it's, it's got to jump, which is physics, to feed, chemistry, on another planet.